Okay, welcome to the Church of Server Podcast Zero. We're trying out this one hit recording of a podcast. Um, so h- here goes. What if you could join a team of people worldwide that could provide a credible example of a different way to live? Do you want to work only five to ten hours a week in order to provide your basic needs in an environmentally friendly way? What if you could be creative and use the latest generally available tech to implore su- Im- explore science for the good of mankind? What if you could be part of a project that stockpiles information and mentally prepares itself for meeting h- a higher intelligence so humanity doesn't look like self-involved children when that intelligence turns up? What if you were part of Church of Server? Ta-da! That's our pitch. And I'm joined today by Harlequin over in Oz. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? So this, it's all very exciting. This is a, a formulated podcast. It's got a running order and everything. It's not just us talking for hours. So uh, <laughs> our first section is from the mailbox. So, so far, um, we've had two emails in, in the months that we've been putting this together and slowly letting the line out and seeing whether people are interested. So people like uh, uh, Digital Whiskey have helped out and been interested in it. There are a few other people that have expressed some interest. Avagdu sent us some updates for the Church of Servant field manual, which we're still working on to see if we can get this one impactful document out to you. Um, that So Avagdu sent some notes for us and Direct Current sent us a, um, a logo for Tactical Librarian, which looks awesome. There's a little picture of a oh, ring I, binder with the words Tactical I Librarian. Right. I haven't seen that, but I'll have to go and look it up. I'll, have to, I'll, I'll send it across to you. He sent it to me directly as an email. And he sent oh. some Recomedia like uh, handbooks for firefighters and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I saw those. I didn't see the I didn't yeah. see the image that I didn't see the image though. So that was cool. So thank you very much and keep them coming. There is a Church of Server Gmail account, church of server at gmail.com. And there is a Church yes. of Server YouTube channel. I think we're gonna put this podcast zero out on Rangers and on Church of Server, but from here on in Go along to the the Church of Server YouTube account if you want to check out Church of Server stuff. Because I think we, we now got to up. separate the two. Although, basically, the yes. people that are Rangers are probably going to be va- at least vaguely interested in Church of Server. So, At the very least, they're likely things blower on a lot. But yeah, we definitely need you to send in your ideas. You know, So this is, this is sort of kind of like a meta-religion, a, a, a post-religion framework for people of, of any stripe of religion, whether it's you know, or if you're an atheist, or if you're an agnostic, you know, the idea is that we don't look like dickheads if something turns up, is essentially it. So that means looking at all the things that humans do wrong right now, if you like. And then sorting them out. Yeah, just giving people a sort of like, here is a framework that works, you know, <laughs> here is a lifestyle that works so you don't have to worry, you know, that you're damaging the planet just by your existence. Where, you know, in a very sort of like a an actual workers owning the means of production type thing, not working your mm. guts out just in order to be able to stay alive and providing a decent pattern for other people to go, we could do what these guys do. You know, like when you look at the Amish and you think that would be great. I could totally live like that, but I don't think I could do the God end of it. Well, I have nice beards. That's, mm. always, that's always a start. I mean, I like the beads, but I, I like beads, so it's interesting. Tis, tis yeah. a fine my, fortress my. monastery, English, but tis no barn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and we want we want access to that technology because it's just lying around now. That's the stupid yeah. thing. It's just, I mean, all the things that we've, all the tech that we've got, you know, but especially me and Harlequin, because we we both wash dishes. We're entirely the best people to come up with, you know, the expense level of this thing. There's always some middle class family that goes, oh, we went off grid. Well, how did you do that? Yes. Well, we took half a million pounds. What? <laughs> and then we did it. I don't have what? half a million pounds. Half, I can't do that. Half a million pounds. Yeah, we bought a big. We don't have half a million house. of anything. We bought a farm. Did you now? Well, unfortunately, on my salary, they're not selling farms for twenty quid. So no. this is this is more coming from your working class because there are more of us than there are of them. Um, that is yeah. very true. So in in that vein, we keep seeing these really good bits of real estate that you think you know if we had ten thousand people. Or twenty thousand, or a hundred thousand. We could just buy this shit out of pocket change. We could get everybody to look yeah. down the back of the sofa and go, "Oh yeah, we'll build another church of server commune." You know, I fancy seeing what would happen if you tried to build a church of server commune out of cargo containers. I want, you know, and the church of server communes will produce media and say, "Well, this is our thing. This is day <laughs> one of us building our I thing. Think... This is how much it's costing. Here are the books. Here's, yeah. here's all the solar panels." We're getting Bob to rig in the solar panels. We're not paying for electricity or water or whatever the shit is. 
So there's a, in New Zealand, there's this weird commune that if you sign up, you can live there. It's sort of like common land, which is amazing. You know, where if you're a member, you can live there. But unfortunately, it doesn't work quite as well as that. But it could. But it's the only place yes. in the world that I've seen it. So in the running order, which I think I'm going to paste all of the running order into the show notes that go below a YouTube video. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to do with them. So you can get to them. But you'll be able to download the, um, the, the, the actual document if you want um from archive.org because the this podcast is going on archive.org like we used to do rangers radio with the running order as a separately downloadable file as well but on archive.org it will just be audio because we've literally just got a symbol you know up as the video for this just so we don't have to then build a youtube video and do all the editing edit the less editing we can do the more media we can make essentially yes yes and unless it drives me insane when i mess it up because yeah. i do mess it up quite quite regularly you know uh, um, so and you're more than welcome to be on the show if you want to if you want to be on a church of server podcast and we can organize the time come and have a chat yeah be part of it it's inclusive yeah. it's just that you know we wash dishes we've got time ha- it just <laughs> has to fit around it just has to around, fit around the world of hospitality <laughs> and small child in my case yeah and time zones but this is great you've got yeah. two people essentially on opposite ends of the planet running this okay yes. so yeah so um the youtube link uh, it's a vice video about this guy that lives mm. on this so-called common land which is a bit much to be yeah. to be brutally honest because it is stolen from the maori which is well out of order yeah but you know interesting it's, from it's what a lovely done. idea in that nobody can own the land and they sewed it yeah. up so tight that some of the people that live on the land want to buy the land and own it and stop people from just moving mm. in and one guy is kind of like we want the people yeah you know i don't know how religious movement works you know, if you could prove that you had a religious urge to go and live on land that nobody owned, mm. whether you could swing that by the New Zealand government, whether you could just go, we are building a church. The New Zealand government, the New Zealand government does seem quite chilled out, apart from the last, you know, the last little bit. They're, they're quite, they're quite common sense in their nature. In a lot of ways, you know, more, but if, if, if more you're so, saying my more age, so than most other governments. If you're my age, you know, they don't want you to move there in case you get old and sick on their dime. And I don't. Yeah, know, that's true. Uh, I. There's, I think maybe one of the things, one of the field trips I might have to do if I find myself in London is uh, to go to the New Zealand consulate and say, mm. you know, New Zealand, it's lovely. Same. I'd like to live there. I don't have any, I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of money. And, yeah. but there's this place that I would like to live and I'm part of this sort of religious framework or quasi religious mm. framework. You know, um, does, does that even work? And maybe get them to yeah. probably say no. Because I'm nearly 50, okay. so the chance of me being can, in New Zealand is no. increasing. Yeah, but it'll be interesting. But it, 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 it does seem to be one of the nicer places on earth to live. Yeah, but well, which, it's a very pretty place to but start if, with. But I also want to go and, as part of this over the next year, is go and visit communes that still exist in the north of England. Yeah. You know, get in touch with them, ask if I can go and visit and see you know but a lot of them that are listed on oh, i don't and don't forget where when you're sending you on an enforced encampment to the uh to throstle hole as well i'm sending you off to throstle roll to go and do your buddhist studies weekend <laughs> don't forget i'm sending you off to go and learn how to meditate where, where's that Throstle hole is in northumberland i think it's up part near it's in new new new, new newcastle somewhere all right newcastle okay. england not newcastle australia for everyone listening in oh, australia that's, that's a good thing yeah i'll go do that um yeah but it's like they run weekends um, no, and you can go and learn to meditate. It's sort of like sitting on a cushion and not doing stuff. Okay. That's what meditating is. I'm good at that. Yes, we'll get to that in a minute. Not doing stuff. The not thinking is, is a lot harder. Okay, so that's how we're yeah, but everyone has real estate. Problems. I didn't put the gun fort in the Humber, which we could have bought if we if we had got this sorted out a year or two ago. It's been sold, unfortunately. Yeah. But oh, it's monumentally hard to to fix up. You would need people essentially oh. living there to do it up. So it might come back oh. on the market again at a later date, probably for, everyone goes, probably for less these. money, because you'd literally yes. need like half a dozen ser- to a dozen server monks to go there and paint the thing, yeah, paint it bright white and put the big infinity symbol on the side of the church's server, mm. yeah, build build yeah. greenhouses for growing food and chooks in the gun turrets and stuff. It'd be great. I like that idea of a gun turret being. T- it's like it's like it literally is like the biblical the biblical point of like you know yeah, the, swords the, 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 the swords into plowshares. It's that that moment in the book, and it's quite a nice moment in the book. 
Um, I still want to build giant Black robots Rock. with rail guns, but that's just me. I'm not saying we don't have. I'm not <laughs> saying there's no giant robots. I'm not saying there's no rail guns. I'm not even saying anything like that. All I'm saying is it's a nice part of the it, a nice part of the New Testament. Yeah. Is it New Testament or is it the Old Testament? I can't remember uh, where that bit is. In the, yeah, I don't know. I get lost now because I started reading the Tanaka and it's just like when I started reading the Tanaka, I got, got stuck in the whole world of like this is interesting. This is what Jewish people believe. And then I started having to read Talmud and I'm like this is even more interesting. This is what it says about the you know. This is what it says about these funny things in the tent that happened. Yeah. Because it all started making a lot more sense, you know. Yeah. But yeah, so oh. we're, it would be really awesome if we could get like a shitload of people to just go, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'll put in a few quid. Yeah. And then we buy somewhere and then we go, right, we got one. And, yeah. you know, somewhere where land is cheap. Yep. Um, yes. yes. Well, I did find I did find a nice farm on, on King Island, which is in between Tasmania and Australia, mainland Australia and Tasmania, the island, yeah, um, and that was quite interesting. Um, but it came with the like it's on King Island. It was a bit shit because getting to King Island is kind of difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a nice place if you want to go and I've... not find someone again. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying that if we if we do get an island thing, we are going to necessarily have to buy boats. Yes, we are. You're going to need it's stuff true. from the mainland sooner or later. A PO box so you yeah. can get stuff delivered and shit like that. So the mm. the gun yeah. fort was going to require a couple of boats being moored very near it. Yeah. Very near it to know, make so, it work. You know, extra costs include putting a mooring buoy down. Yeah. I think they cost about, you have to pay about 600 quid to get your own mooring buoy installed. And you have it, you know, significantly mm. far away from the gun port and you have a tender. You know, you, you, you run people to the gun port and, fr and back again from, from the sailboat. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I do like the idea of a sailboat, though. That's a funny idea, isn't it? Sailing's pretty good. It makes a lot I of like sense. I like sailing. There, there is a. There, there is a reason that... Well, it's free, isn't it? Sort of, it's like, you, as long as the boat's in decent repair. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, as long as, you know, like, you can dry dock it somewhere where it's like, you know, you can sort of sleep on the boat. You don't really, like, you've taken your you've taken your house with you wherever you went, and then you put it back in the water when it's fixed, then you go sailing around again. Yeah. Yeah. No. But, you know, once, anyway, once you got, I mean, the gun... Digression. The gun, the gun um, emplacement had, like, its own dock and stuff like that, so you yeah. could actually tie up a, yeah. a couple of boats to it. But you've also, mm -hmm. you, when you get a boat, you're also creating more living space. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. I mean, really, a, a sort of okay boat that doesn't have a lot of equipment on it is only going to cost you a couple of grand. You could buy a bunch of them, put down mooring boys and yeah. raft them together so they're all tied together. And then you've got another yeah. chunk of living space and essentially mm. a navy, which is also fun. Yeah. So, yeah, yes. so, we're, so if you want to contribute or you want to send in links and stuff, interesting real estate that we could theoretically buy is another thing that you could send us. If you see somewhere like, you know, huge warehouse for sale for $1 in Detroit. Yeah, or, or 500 hectares of Alaskan, Alaskan tundra. Yeah, or something. Or I like the idea of Alaskan tundra. Yeah, we'll just build underground. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so th that's really, re that was really, really super interesting, you know, so we're very interested in that sort of thing. Um, okay, so we'll go on to Recomedia. Okay, then. so, so the first bit of Recomedia, first bit of Recomedia was um, Hardcore Zen by Brad Warner, um, which there is a, there's a link to the, um, there's a link to a copy of the, like the details of the book, and there's a link to a documentary about Brad Warner. You can find the book if you have a half decent look around the internet. Um, it's an interesting read because it's Brad Warner's uh, was famously a punk um, of the sort of like late eighty, uh, yeah, late eighties, early nineties genre um, in America, and then went and travelled across to teach English to Japanese teenagers in Japan under the Jets program, the Japanese Ent uh, Enterprise Training Program, I think it's called. But anyway, under the Japanese Education Program, and he had learned about zazen at university. Um, he learned about um, Zen Buddhism through university and he sort of studied bits and pieces in America and then he'd gone off and, and he's become now a, um, a certified, uh, you know, certified teacher or certified priest in, in the Zen tradition. Um, and his little, the interesting thing is, is that he comes under one of the specific brands of Zen, which is like very out there compared to other brands of Buddhism. Um, so there's not a lot of like, you know, like gods and monsters and there's an awful lot of like, just sit down, shut up, and, and do what you need to do to get your head sorted. And you getting your head sorted is literally you just sitting down and taking 10 minutes in a day or taking 20 minutes a day and just doing Zazen. And Zazen literally just means sitting down and not talking and not trying not to, trying not to think. You will still think and thoughts will still come up in your head. 
and why I think that's important and why I think you should go and have a read is it has some really good explanations of um, Brad explains really, really well that process of doing Zazen, of doing meditation. Um, and I don't think that meditation, meditation isn't a Buddhist thing. Meditation is a thing that's been, it been, has been proven um, by a bunch of psychologists in a range of different studies to basically mean that it is good for you no matter who you are. So it doesn't matter what ilk you are or what you are doing. If you go and take 10 minutes and you go and sit down and you go through mindfulness training, you go and do some mindfulness and go and sit down and do that thing, that's going to make you better cognitively and, and improve your well-being as a human being. And it's the easiest thing in the world to do because literally you get a pillow, you sit on the edge of the ass crack of the pillow or you sit on a chair if you can't sit on a pillow on the floor in, in cross-legged and you just let the world sort of, for the want of a better term, fall away and try and let your thoughts clear. And when a thought comes up, you just let it go. Um, but the, anyway, Brad has this beautiful, he has some really, really wise words in his book about how to do it and what it means and what it is type thing. Um, so that's the first bit of Recce Media. Um, yeah, the second one is, um, I found um, one of my maths, one of my majors at university is mathematics. And so you're like, why the hell are you going to university study mathematics? Because it's interesting, because I find mathematics interesting. It's all got to do with neural networks and AIs and bits and pieces like that. That's why I do maths. Um, there's uh, the first year undergrad. Someone published the first year undergrad. It's one of the universities in America published the first year undergrad discrete mathematics course. Um, and it's about, they're about sort of like, you know, between six and 12 minutes long. Mm. And they're just really, really interesting little bits of discrete mathematics. Discrete mathematics is different from normal mathematics in that you don't do a lot of adding up in it. It's more about logic. Mm. Um, and there's a really interesting part in one of my logic books that turns around and says that a three-year-old can do logic. Yeah. Because logic is all about sort of yes, no answers or true, false answers. So like, you know, the book is green. Is that true or false? Mm. You know, and that's where that's where philosophy can give people a real hard time is because philosophy likes to talk about logic in completely contrived and um, emotional ways, which is not the way that mathematics talks about logic. And that's why philosophy is so hard to do and maths is so easy to do. Um, yeah. Um, and the last one, do you want to do the last one? Yeah, the, the, last well, the last one? one is this guy called David Graeber, who sort of um, is one of those rock star um, philosophers and eco economists that's written a very popular book called Bullshit Jobs but he also wrote um, yes. a, a treatise called A History of Debt which is how yeah. debt is used to sort of crush people and make them do things yeah and it's, it's it's the premise is explaining how debt like how how debt was formed and it's not the way you, you know people think that economies were created through barter and then this and then da 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 hmm. and Graeber calls that and says no that can't that doesn't happen that isn't how it works and he and he i'll let you go and watch the video but it's an interesting process he goes through this sort of like thought process and says no 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 no, that's complete baloney we all we you know that's not obvious you know the far more the far more um okay razor version of this is like you know this is how it works and it's a very he's very poignant and what he talks about but he's also very very interesting in terms of um in terms of what he's talking about and how people should understand how debt works in a modern capitalist society um, and what it means for the people in it. Yeah, I mean, um, there's a, I'll have to put it in next week's record media, but there's an interesting um, guy who did a talk about, well, that was supposed to be about Hexiertz, but it was in fact all about um, land ownership. Because he was saying, basically, anybody can build a Hexiert, anybody can build a house for themselves. We've got the designs now, all you've got to do is cut out, you know, so many triangles of uh, plywood and you've got a house. Yeah. Is where you can put that house and he went on about basically the Norman conquest began in 1066 and they haven't left mm. you know we're still under that kind of pressure and talked about the concept of mortgages and stuff like that and went into the whole meaning of the word mortgage which means stranglehold mm. you know so we're taught that we have to own a house we're taught that we have to you know and it's all this bollocks about where we live and status and stuff like that and for which we're enslaved for most of our working lives if not all of our working lives to get that sorted so i looked that out and find that is from the 2014 i think um emf it was a very good chat mm. but yeah okay so that's our record media we don't want to give you sort of like too much to go and look at everybody's got stuff that they got to do um the next section is how far we are personally along because we set out some some zero funds things to do 
um, so that you could be getting on with stuff. If, if, if the Church of Server appeals to you as an idea, you can get on with stuff on your own because there's no formal structure to it yet. There's not anybody that's in charge of it. We're trying to get to a point where, you know, you don't need anybody to be in charge of it. The idea of a, of a node of server, you know, if you cut off the, the network to a node, it's still got a, a, quite a lot of functionality to it. So this, in the last couple of weeks, I joined the local library, which I think everybody should do. If, you, if you're lucky enough to live in a country that has local libraries, their funding depends on um, there being loads of people signed up to the library. Um, and they're just such useful places. Also, if you've got no internet access or your internet access is really crappy, libraries have very good internet access in the UK, definitely. And I think the same is true in the US. That's definitely, that's definitely true over here. Yeah. Um, I tried to get a, a sort of kind of badge of server and I saw this thing on eBay called a Wi-Fi USB stick and that was a complete fail. But the idea was that you could you could wear a Wi-Fi USB stick, switch it on, and then anybody could access the contents of the stick. So you would essentially be a network node just by being there. You'd have a stick full of useful books and stuff that were I, hopefully copyright free that you could just hand out to people. If they had a phone or a, a laptop, they can access it, but we can't do that. Um, not with this stick. We'll have to do it with a, uh, with a Raspberry Pi or something like that still. Mm. Um, which is a shame because it makes it more complex but it's interesting because yeah. it, you know it's it's interesting because the experiment failed yeah it's not a negative so i i and i also i'm also waiting for two tiny non-moving part components for my new video rig <laughs> why is it always the bit you need it's, that turns it's, just, it's just this one bit i could do it but i'd have to i'd have to basically drill holes in the side of um the waterproof enclosures and I'm not entirely sure I want to do that. I think the waterproof enclosures could work out, be, end up being quite useful. You know, if we ever do filming yeah. outside and the weather's crap. So I'm building, I'm building a new video rig out of action cameras so that more or less anybody, most people would be able to afford setting up a few cameras and a microphone so that they can produce video and show us how to do things really cheap without mm -hmm. investing hundreds and hundreds of dollars in a camera or you know, stabilization for their phone or whatever. And ideally not really do any editing. Because editing, editing is bad. If you're just showing someone something, I don't think you really need to do all that much editing if you set it up right. So if you could produce a video in the time it takes you to say the things that you need to say and show the things that you need to show, and then just put a title card on the front and a, and a, and a credits card on the end, and then you can upload it. Your throughput, the throughput for ideas and useful stuff is going to be much higher so that's mm. why i'm building the new video rig despite the fact i can just make videos it's the editing that this that just makes me not want to do things so i'm trying to remove that as much as possible and what have you been up to man um i have continued my dedicated studying of foreign language being arabic um i've also been listening to my esperanto videos which i listen to just because i'm subscribed to all of the interesting esperanto videos on on online um, which is another thing we spoke about in one of the Austries, which was, um, I think it was, or maybe it was in one of the episodes we've done, which was that idea of learning other languages and, and what that does for your brain and that how important that is and that ability to communicate with a wider audience of people um, is really important. So I've been, I've been studying, studying, studying. Um, and then the only other thing I'm doing, apart from working, which is I don't really enjoy doing, I must have been, I don't, I'm not a fan of my job. Um, I only do it because I get paid. Um, I have magically today I actually got my camera out for the first time in about a month and um, and decided to take me with it to work. And I was like, I will go for a walk because I won't get anything else done anyway. And I'll have to go for a walk to get out of going for, going to do extra work while I'm sitting around at work. So I took my I took my camera down to the uh, <coughs> down to the creek and started taking interesting pictures and worked out that I had I think I've got I've got that prob same problem you have. I have all the bits to build my stabilization rig for the for the cannon. Um, but I don't have the nubbins that screws into the bolt at the bottom is the bit I need. Yeah. I need like two T-piece um, connectors out of the whole thing. So my journey for tomorrow was to go up to the uh, hardware shop under the proviso of buying something for work yeah. and, um, and go and get some T-pieces. You may notice there's a lot um, of stress my... on, on actually creating media and input and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, but we are I mean, the reason why I was... 
you know, yeah, the, the reason why I was basically trying to get the camera working was to get more, have more interesting background shots. So when I wanted to record a podcast, when I wanted to record an audio bit and I wanted to put it on YouTube, I had something that I didn't have to go because it takes an inordinate amount of time for me to download stuff off the internet, mm. um, even if it's just stock footage. Um, and most of the stock footage I find isn't particularly relevant for what I'm talking about and I don't want to look at it. And also a lot of um, it's not, not free. Which, well. Yeah, and I, like, you know, if it's not free, then I'm not, I'm not going to use it. And I think that even if the, the legacy of me having a camera is me creating, you know, 10,000 hours of, you know, one hour long clips of stock footage of the Australian bush, hmm. then I think that's a positive thing. Yeah. I you know, mean, I don't think that's a negative. That, that's, you know, that, that taking pictures of, you know, wandering around taking pictures of, of, the, of the Australian countryside is phenomenally interesting. We have some of the most amazing species of creatures known to mankind, both flora and fauna. Um, and it's just an interesting thing to do and wander around and take pictures and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. I would really like there to be a section on the Church, Church of Server YouTube channel that is just free stock footage. Yeah. You know, so if you have got um. something to say and you don't want to be on camera necessarily, or you want some things to cut away to, you can go into the Church of Server thing and they're all Creative Commons stock footage. Yeah. So if you use it for something creative, um. but I don't want to be giving footage to people that want to make adverts. No. But also right, things sort of like, you know, when you've got text that's also video, like in the yes. text, it's videoized, you know, lots of stock footage makes it easier to do creative stuff like that. <laughs> so you could have somebody reading sure. out a very short passage, like a paragraph, you know, it has occurred to me and it comes up like karaoke words, but there's video inside the words of all sorts mm -hmm. of different things. That would be an interesting way of pr pr putting that message across visually. So, hmm. but because for the ossuary, we've used a, a lot of digital whiskey's background shots. Yeah. You may notice that it cuts back to YouTube. So we need, we need longer sections of footage, like hours at a time or footage stitched together and then uploaded. So you've got an hour or so of podcast footage. So thanks to digital whiskey, we're doing that. Um, and another thing, hmm. if you're listening to this podcast, like in, in uh, exclusion to all the other stuff we've been putting out, the ossuary is essentially, it's a boneyard, you know, of ideas. It's just us where we've recorded long distance conversations where we've just been sitting there going, oh, we could do this and this and this. And a lot of those ideas, you know, possibly will require rejection. There's just us mucking about because we're just human. So if you want to go and it's listen to that it's, it's and just have it's... <laughs> other people talking in the background where you go, oh, yeah, I've thought of an idea that's related to that. Because other, you know, other people just spitballing can give you ideas when you're trying to think about yeah. how to do something. And it might be completely unrelated, but solve that problem for you. So we're going to have that up there as a separate playlist. Yes. The, the best way to describe the Osri at the moment is it's literally like it's either my break time at work or your alone time at night. Yeah. And we're having a yak about whatever the hell comes up and whatever the hell we're looking at or whatever's going on in the general surrounds of wherever the hell it is we are. Yeah. Or what, you know, what we thought of at work today. So, um, so yeah, it really... It, it really is not a podcast yeah, in the best it's terms just of us the rambling, universe. Which is why it's not as a podcast. Yes. And this is because it's got a sort of a format and we're trying to keep it under an hour. Um, an hour. And so where we're, while we're doing that, how far we are along, some of the things we wanted to do included bleach printed T-shirts for Church of Server. So you're getting creative and you're sort of making your own clothes in a way. Um, we wanted uh, a, a sort of like to start stockpiling all the useful information, particularly Wikipedia. We're, we're trying to figure out a way to make Wikipedia shareable in a in a in an immediate location. So if you're there, you as a church as a, as a as a node or a monk of server, whichever you end up wanting to call yourself, or a nil or a null, you know, wh whatever word you you choose to call yourself, we haven't really nailed anything down yet. Or a tactical librarian, you can share that information just by dint of wearing the jacket that you're wearing or the robes that you're wearing. You've got it clipped to the front of your robes, and people can share that information. So that information is wandering around in, in embodied by the, the people that want to be part of church or server. Or if you don't, even if you don't want to be church, part of church or server, that would be a cool thing. Um, what else did we come up with? Possible construction of robes, building of web servers from junk PCs, buying um, electronic equipment more second hand so that you're not creating, you're not basically encouraging companies to make zillions of versions of the same thing and just having less of an impact and maybe exploring vegetarianism and veganism or at least uh, have living a more meat free diet because as humans we we're not meant to eat this much meat that we currently eat 
you know, it's, it's causing obesity and it's causing us to destroy the planet for grazing land and land grown to um, feed cattle and other animals that we eat and we treat really badly. So I'm giving, just I'm just giving, on that point, I, I was vegetarian thing, a lot of thought, and, you know, it's just, yeah, just on that point, actually, I found an interest, I was listening to something or other. I don't know who it was. I was listening to it. it was it, it was on YouTube and I was listening to a thing and it was talking. Oh, I wonder who it was. It was the guy who wrote um, Feral. What's his name? I can't think now. He's a, he's a very undedicated vegan. Anyway, he was talking about this. He was talking about this, this idea. Um, and he was saying that um, land use, he was talking about land use in England. He was saying that in you in in the U, in the UK, something like forty percent of land use is put aside for um, sheep farming. So whether that's mutton, lamb, or sheep, or what's the wool, mutton, lamb, or wool, and then there's another word for sheep that isn't sheep. That's like lamb and mutton, hogget, huh? Hoggett, see? Huh. Yeah. Farming coming back to me there. Hoggett. Oh, clever, Kim. How, um, how do you spell so that? So yeah, H O G G A T, I believe. All right. So like okay, yeah. sheep products. Yeah, it's like sheep product that isn't like edible to humans or isn't it's older than mutton, I think. Yeah. Is that how it works? I don't really know. Like, I think it's old female sheep, is how it works. Mm. Um but anyway, you're saying that forty percent of the of the E of the UK is held up in 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 terms of um like land, in terms of sheep production for whatever means that is. But only and this is only one part of it, obviously, but only um, zero point four percent of the UK diet is actually um, based in, based off of sheep. Yeah, I don't. Eat so you have forty percent. Well, no one does. That's the problem. But forty percent of the country is taken. Like forty percent of the whole of the U UK is taken up just by keeping sheep that no one eats. I wonder how much. And I, I, I like into dog food. And cat well, food. that's that's what I'm wondering. Like an awful lot of it must go into wool, right? Um, you know, but then how much of that then how much of that then like mutton and hogget is then going into like dog food? Um, and, you know, where is that going otherwise type thing? Because that's another thing I... Um, and then from that, I was having a conversation at work because one of these things, I am one of the three vegetarians at work. I work in the kitchen. This is quite entertaining to most of the other people who work in the kitchen, you know. And we were having a conversation about um, getting uh, a couple of heifers slaughtered that were... Um, they've been raised by one of the um, chefs at work. Mm. And she was trying to find someone... She was trying to find a, um, a... Uh, mobile butcher to come around and actually do the do the slaughtering, hang them up, and then come around and cut them up, put them in the freezer for it. Yeah. Um, you know, and as much as I don't want people going around eating cows, I think if people are going to go eat cows, they should do it that way. But she'd gone and she'd bought these cows as um, two or three day old um, cows um, from the milk sale. So what happens is, is if you don't, if people don't understand, you get like you know, cows have to be pregnant to make milk. This is the way that all mammals work. Um, so what happens is, is when they have a cow, if the cow is, is doesn't make a female cow, makes a male cow, they take the male cow out and they sell it at like three days old. So they get it so that the cow is making enough milk and then they basically start like pumping milk out of the cow, the mother cow, to make more milk. Yeah. Okay. And then they take the female, they, they, they take the male cow. And I didn't realize this. I thought most of them went like, you know, into basically into making herds of like grown up beef cattle. Yeah. And it, that isn't the truth. Okay, like ninety percent of the of the cows that are basically sold as three day olds, about ninety percent of them actually go into the dog food industry. So, and I find like I don't know, I find that a, a weird idea in the fact that you would like let an animal live for three days and then you would basically put it in a slaughter out slaughter house at three days old and cut it up for dog food. Yeah. And I, what did me was it wasn't actually the matter of that that process of happening. What did me was it's like why the hell aren't we selectively breeding? cows so they make females and why hasn't someone worked out the hormone response for cows so you can just turn it on and make them make milk instead of having to go through like laboring a cow and then making a cow and then doing the next thing type thing yeah that was just like why isn't someone like that out well, anyway that was a thing, complete I mean, digression if you told me 10 years ago that i would be looking into becoming a vegetarian or a vegan or, or at least mostly eating more vegetable yeah. pro produce than meat i'd have laughed at you but when you actually yeah. look into it it's such a destructive industry even milk. Oh, yeah. It's just like, there is vegan cheese. Why is it so yeah. expensive? You're making it from vegetable products, so you don't have yeah. to do all this whole animal product thing. Yeah. Why can't you make it dirt cheap? Why isn't it cheaper than cheese? Yeah. If all you've got to do is grow vegetables, your actual per acre of the stuff that you need to put into cheese has got to be way lo lower cost. Way less. Yeah. So what, you know, that was the, that was my that was my other find for the week. Then was I was going around. I, I was buying my buying my my coconut 
my coconut yogurt in the supermarket. Yeah. And uh, and I was leaving the back of the uh, labels of the yogurt because it's one of those things I like to do. You know, a bit of an OCD freak. Yeah. I like to read all the back of the labels. And I was like, why does the coconut yogurt taste so sweet? Is there like heaps of sugar in it? And I'm like, no, it's like bugger all sugar in it. That's amazing. Like, there's no sugar added to it. It's literally just coconut milk or like coconut kernel ground up and then you know, made into a paste or mil- milk um, or a drink. And then it's just had a, bac- a bacteria, like it's had lactobacillus added to it to make it, I think it's lactobacillus, to make it into yogurt. So basically like, lactobacillus is just eating the carbohydrate and then turning into yogurt. And I went and started looking at like the Greek yogurt, which is like the cheapest one. And the, the coconut yogurt was actually cheaper than the Greek yogurt was. And the coconut and the Greek yogurt had a shit ton of sugar added to it. And I was just like, that's really interesting. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have thought that Greek yogurt should be sweet, but it still has a, a metric shit ton of, um, of sugar put in it. But it's not sustainable. And if we are if we are going to sort of like build no. these monasteries, they need to be completely sustainable. Yeah. You know, this is kind of like, okay, well, it's vegan. I mean, imagine, you know, sort of like if... If it takes off, and you, because uh, one of the ways of generating money for equipment and so people aren't skint, which I don't want to do, I don't want people to have to give up all their worldly goods. I don't want people to not have their own room. I don't want people to not have their own stuff. But I think the process of doing the whole church of server thing is um, is so that we can live in a way that we can live with. Mm. You know, and I think we'll get better. We won't have to stockpile stuff. I mean, I stockpile stuff because it's it's cheap for like an instant. You know, it's like you have this yeah. opportunity to buy this thing at this price and right, yeah, I can see a use for it. I haven't got, I'm not surrounded by toys. I'm surrounded by bits of tech that I think, right, five years from now when I have even less money and my laptop dies on me or I accidentally break it, have I got something to pop in its place when I don't have any sort of replacement yeah. money? So, But I'd like to have less stuff than that. You know, I'm quite happy to donate equipment that's not quite so mine so that there is a, a media studio in a church of server facility. You know, I'm quite happy to yeah. surrender my survival gear if we're going to if we're going to go and do stuff where we're going to be cold and I can just say, all right, I've got a spare sleeping bag. Yeah. You know, I, I want to be able to equip people that turn up, say, say a, you get someone that is homeless that really does get it or has only a very little amount of stuff needs to not have to then go and spend money on the stuff that he needs to live at a church observer commune type thing. So I'd like to get, I'd like to divest myself of a lot of this stuff, but there's, you know, short of giving it away, which seems extremely wasteful given the amount of work I put into earning the money to, to get those things. You know, so I've got three guitars that are up for being given away on the caveat that if you, if you get it, you learn to play the guitar. If you don't learn to play the guitar, you return it to me so I can give it to someone that does want to play the guitar. Hmm. You know, if you then go and buy yourself a better guitar, return the guitar to me so I can give it to someone else. Yeah. Type thing. Or a laptop or, you know, or a piece of equipment. Something like that. Anyway, so that's how, that's why we've got this, how far we are along. We, you know, we want, where we are Church of Server. We are doing things along the lines of Church of Server already. We're not going, right, when we've got 10,000 followers, then Church of Server will happen. No, we're thrashing out the manual. We're, get, we're giving it because I think it would be a ha- it's a good framework to have just to help you get through life anyway. You know, if you've got a framework that we can go, oh right, I somebody's worked out all this stuff I can agree with, and I can use that as a lens through which to look through life, so I'm I'm not as imprisoned by my life. Then great. But anyway, we'll stop on that thing. So that's the how far we are along. We'll continue to talk about that in later podcasts. Um, now we've got discussion. Are you still there? I'm still here. All right. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting. All right. So <laughs> I'm waiting for you to finish your sentence. We're on our discussion. Um, how we're divided and why, which is a big thing that is is kind it's of. Is a very big thing. And we've probably covered it in ranges and all sorts of other things, and definitely we covered lots of times. But I think I think it needs restating. Yeah, like, you know, I think that's one of those things that people don't either people don't now. get or they don't understand. And that and you know, it's not it's, it's a it's a changing thing because the ways in which we're divided change. You know. And and the immediacy of, of how that affects you changes. Well, I mean, recently, um, and it, and it's about seeing and it's about seeing a bigger picture. If you can understand where that division and, and the whys and the wherefores come from, and yeah. see it in the bigger picture, then you can look at the next crises that comes along, and say, oh, hang on, this is another one of those things where I'm divided or I'm separated or I, you know things happen. You know, in the last week we've seen an absolute tragedy happen, you know, in New Zealand, which 
to everyone's point of view would basically be like that'll never happen in new zealand you know and that was the murder of um of something like 10 people and the subsequent you know like well, you know actually, hospitalization of another 40 people no it's actually 50 people are dead the 50 people dead yeah. okay we got that wrong and, um, um yeah but it's a just a bunch of people probably around 50 people were hospitalized yeah which is just like you know that's it's it, it's an intolerable thing no matter where you stand on the whole debate around this person's religion or that person's faith or anything else the fact that 50 people died is that's crap like it doesn't matter who those people are it doesn't matter what color their skin is or or who they are you know and if you look but if you take a step back from that, you say, well, why does this thing happen? You know, why why do we have this? Why do we have walls being built here? Why is the separation of the state in, in Palestine and, and Israel happening? You know, no matter where you stand on that debate, all of those things are about division. Yeah. You know, you look at the Kurdish situation in, 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 in Syria, yeah, in Turkey. That's a separation, a division between two groups of people who otherwise are both part of the same human race, you know. And that's where I think people don't understand you know and i'm not meaning to discourse someone well, no, um, discourage someone ground. from having conversations and you've got various various information streams that purport to be from authority you know when you're yeah. a little kid it's your parents as you get a little bit older it's books and television and radio and what people are saying and newspapers and a general media thing but if you if you follow the chain of the money you start following that all the way up you find that it's usually very wealthy people are putting money into this sort of like concept of division. You've got very wealthy people saying, oh, we've got to defend our culture. Oh, our culture's slipping away and it's being eroded. And people have been doing that for thousands of years. And to take an example from the modern day, somebody that is, does bear a chunk of responsibility for, for sort of making it all right. And we've seen a sudden spike in very right wing if that's even a thing, terrorism, where white people go and murder people they don't agree with, like the guy that was sending bombs to people that Trump didn't like in America, you know, like the English Defence League in the UK and UKIP creating divisions. I mean, a major division in the UK is, is an all-new division. You know, it's the people who voted for Brexit and people who voted against it. And that's divided the country. Like, I have to suspend that division i have to literally put it to one side when i'm talking to people because otherwise i wouldn't have any family to talk to my entire family voted for brexit my best friend here in the uk voted for brexit and i don't understand why yeah. you know I, I just don't get it you know fair enough it's another layer of government but really there are so many layers of government one more or less isn't going to make a difference and this one's going to have lots of harmful effects. And if you follow the money back up the chain, it's always the super rich that are pushing this division. Donald Trump goes, oh, these guys, blah, 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 blah. I don't like these guys. And then when a right wing, for want of a better term, Nazi, drove into a crowd of anti-Nazi protesters and killed someone, his response was not, this is a tragedy. His response was, there were good people and bad people on both sides. You know, there's a reason that in that man's bedside drawer is, is a, a basically a copy of the speeches of Hitler. It's the only book he has, apparently. How that makes you re able to be a prime uh, a, a president of the United States is completely beyond me, given how multicultural it is. And it's and, and these divisions are fake. You know, these divisions are based on skin tone, which is fake because Donald Trump will still do deals with people in Saudi Arabia will still do deals with people in Japan and China. He doesn't care what colour of skin they are. And then there are divisions on gender and sexual orientation. Uh, Trump would have no problem dealing with a super wealthy woman or a super wealthy black person or a super wealthy gay person because they're super wealthy. He's protecting the super wealthy. The 1%. The 1% are funding this division. You know, every single time, if you trace back who's in charge, it's always millionaires and billionaires that are basically, as, as long as we're fighting each other, we don't go, hang on a minute, why have you got all the money? What what sort of right have you got? And also, those people that encourage violence can't by default believe in any god, yet they set us up against each other from a religious standpoint or a cultural standpoint. Yet those people will never have a problem 
we're dealing with people of different cultures and different religions. But the super wealthy of every religion have only claimed to be part of that religion because the, all of the religion, religions say that you've got to look after the poor and the helpless and the needy. Every last one of them says look after the poor. You know, there shouldn't be poor people. If there are people with billions of dollars in their bank accounts, then the only way they can have got there is by underpaying the people that work for them and not sharing out the, pro the vast profits that they're making from their businesses. The moment you employ someone, you are um, basically using their labour and not paying them the full value. You're cheating people out of their work the moment you're making a significant profit. You know, if you had a business where everybody got the same pay and you said, right, OK, um, you know, we'll give out bonuses to the people that worked hardest or worked most effectively. Maybe, maybe that could be a thing. But, you know, so some of the profit will go into bonuses and some of the profit will be reinvested in the business. And if you were truly honest, you'd show where the money went to everybody. But we've got things like shareholders that are people that just give over money that they've got from not working into a system where they don't have to work for pro for bonus payments. So at the moment you have shareholders, yeah, the whole idea it's not an yeah, okay yeah, company. The whole... You know, theoretically you could have investors, uh, but if the investors got uh, like their money back and a profit or a, sh a, a reasonable share of the profits, like if they put money in and you worked out the amount of labor that that was worth and then you bonus them or you gave them profits accordingly, then that would be fair. But it's nothing like that. It doesn't even pretend. No, to the problem is, is that it, it doesn't it doesn't even cover the it doesn't even cover the 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 environmental cost and the labor cost to the person who is actually doing the work. So you get situations you know, where people are literally wasting money in front of poor people who can't have, don't have enough to eat or don't have anywhere to live or can't send their children to school and you're creating that disparity because when there are super wealthy people certain things cost a lot more because there are super wealthy people that will pay it if poor people won't and yeah. you you basically we're we're coming to the end of a, of a cycle of humanity where people can get away with that and people are getting pissed off with it yeah. you know it is literally all this division is to make wealthy people wealthier that's it it's not a conspiracy. It's not some mad religious um, sort of wave of, of trying to wipe out the people of the other religion. It's so that the wealthy can remain wealthy and powerful. Yeah. The situation in America yeah. where you can essentially buy an election if you've got enough money invested in it is ridiculous. The situation where you've got millionaires and billionaires running any country and helping out the people who, who you know, helping out themselves essentially. You know, the interesting thing about the tax breaks in America, because America has just become one of the most publicly corrupt countries. There are other corrupt countries in the world. I mean, if you've got basically a bunch of people that have walled off a section of planet Earth and said, this is ours, by which we mean this is this belongs to the wealthy people in this geographic location, you've got corruption. It's immediately corrupt because we're all human. And all these divisions are created so we think, well, at least we're not those guys. You know, you've got white people looking at people with different coloured skin going, well, we're not these guys. We're not immigrants. We're not, you know, believing in this superstitious belief that, that's not like our belief. We're not committing heresy by believing a different thing. But I'm telling you, wealthy people don't believe in God for a start because it's impossible to really believe in God and have that kind of ridiculous, obscene wealth. It's not possible. You can't. How can you? How can you possibly believe in, in anything no, that is going to come and judge you if you're, not, if you're behaving like the biggest naughty child in the world? Yeah, it's not possible to be religious or claim that you're going to be saved by your particular God if you abuse children or you create <laughs> systems where people are going to be poor for generations so that they're never going to question your wealth. You can't be religious if you're going to execute someone for having a different belief than you and has the temerity to point that out. You can't be... You, you know, the moment you you ignore the thou shalt not kill and look after the poor that's in every religion. So they essentially make people that are already poor, poorer by trying to do the right thing. You know, Jeff Bezos could feed everybody in the world for about six years. Yeah. And the solution from Jeff Bezos feeding everyone for six years would everyone would get off, would be a lot better off for six years. Well, no, you then know, they it's say... Not like it. 
but why would people work? That, that's their argument. If you give people money, they're not, in, they're not incentivized to work. Yeah, but they are incentivized to work because but they don't want to. Though, what, that's what, the thing is, it doesn't... What physical labor do the super rich do? Yeah, and what, super, and what, and what yeah. labor do, do most of the people in the world do where they, where they literally shuffle paper around in the Western world? To the to the big behest of middle management, yeah. you know, so or they are, are middle management. There are technically you know, there's nothing... two types of super rich people in the world. There's people that have made a huge amount of profit off an already luxurious lifestyle, like they were born mm. into wealth, or at least born into a situation where they were definitely going to go to college. They were definitely going to be looked after for the rest of their lives. They could definitely go and work for their parents' company if if all else failed, and they've just mm. happened to have hit the jackpot and been the right place in the right time to become mega wealthy. It's like Bill Gates. His dad was a was a, um, a lawyer, and doing extremely well for himself. We're talking summer houses, you know, three vacations a year, completely insulated from all the poor people in the world. You know, Steve. And, Jobs, and let's not, the Steve and let's not forget the fact that he basically stole stole the operating system that, which he quote unquote built. Yeah. He basically stole that whole operating system, copyrighted the damn thing, and then started suing people for for stealing his ideas, yeah, which weren't his ideas in the first place. A, a multi billion dollar company without Windows, and Windows is stolen yeah. from Xerox, and then Apple tried to sue them. I mean, uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, possibly people that have made money, but in order to make that money. This is the second type of person. They have had to oppress the shit out of the people that work for them. Yeah, you know, for the, sure. The Apple II maybe is an example of something that was built by people and then they raised the money to manufacture it. But since then, it's just been hire a load of people, work them to death. Yeah. Essentially. You know, exactly like super wealthy people do. And not give them the, and not give them the means to their own production, which is you know that that's something that comes up in 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 a lot of theories. That's the necessity that comes about from all this all this thing is that the distinction right. is not that these people are clever or these people are more intelligent or anything else. It's purely they were born out of the right set of legs, vulva, whatever, and they therefore have money and therefore and, had the opportunities to get the education and therefore, that is designed. Yeah, and, they, and therefore had the opportunity. Uh, and therefore had the opportunity to not only get the education but also to start businesses and start doing things and take the risk and take the you know you know take that ability forward and then go and start the new company that made you know made the next you know new trinket thing that you needed type yeah. thing. you know like no one in the world actually needs windows it's the like, whole world would run quite happily if if the, if the world used linux yeah. GNU well, Linux. it already does the, yeah, like the world already uses that, if you're and, on and the then internet, it runs ninety percent of it. You're using, you're using Linux. Linux. Yeah, yeah. That was created um, by one guy. And that's, and that's the thing is, like you know, that 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 person chose to be, you know, to be selfless and to give away his, give away the work that they were doing and give away all the things that they'd done, and work towards creating a fairer playing field for everyone to use those things. Like Tim Berners-Lee, you know, and, and or um, even Upton, who created the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. You know, the people that you know, have just gone, I don't need to make a lot of money from this because I'm doing something that's good. I'm doing yes, something worthwhile. and that's the notion of, you know, that's the notion of the whole thing here is being good and but, doing the right thing. But all the electronics you know. that you've got in your house was built by someone that wasn't being paid a lot. Yeah, and that's the thing is those people, those people live in a, you know, if you bought a brand new computer, hmm. then you're basically supporting people, you know, living in, in domicile housing, which is which we would consider to be slavery. Yeah. in a third world or in a developing nation for want of a better term third world nation developing nation whatever the hell you want to call that you know in china in southeast asia those people live in in um squalor, in yeah in, in discussing squalor. if you you know if you buy clothing that comes from bangladesh or thailand or vietnam or all these other countries type thing if you're buying clothes from those places then the women who are basically living in, in squalor and living in poverty in those countries don't have a real life because you're choosing to subject them to to making thing is and you have a choice you could change your you could you could quite easily change your pattern of purchase to mean that those people don't have to live like that and they can just get on with their lives and just you know do positive things and change the economy of the nation individually every single person who's listening to this can go out and choose not to do that thing and go to an op shop and buy a second hand jumper buy a second hand shirt you know buy a bolt of material and make their own make their own clothing yeah, for the most part, we're all clever enough to use a sewing machine, you know, you know, and we'll probably get far more out of it by actually doing it that way. And that change that occurs, you know, that change of using GNU Linux, you know, 
making sure that you know you're only buying secondhand um, secondhand computer parts. Cause what? Why do you need anything else? You know, like an i5 computer for the last like five years runs just as well as the, the latest i5 processor. Or the i7, you know, you don't need. Or, the, you know, you, you know, you generally don't need that kind of processing power to do ninety percent of what you do. To do anything, yeah. You know, I mean, most computers now are essentially then you're not programming them; you're using them as research tools. Yeah, you're or literally using them tools. to go onto YouTube. You know, and there's you know. And, yeah, fair enough. The the monitor that I'm looking at right now was probably made by somebody that was underpaid in Singapore or India or China. But this monitor was destined for landfill. So I've not sort of like punched all that money into another company that's gone, you know, okay, we're now going to impress everybody. You know, the only reason that they don't get paid good wages is so that the profit margin can be higher. So, you know, don't, you know, this, one of the ways you can stop being from div stop being quite so divided is, is to understand that that shit's being made by people yeah. that are in crappy environments that the tools and the materials are slowly poisoning them as well there's no reason it couldn't be safer the first monitors and and things like that weren't made in china they were made in the united states where there's laws yeah. and shit and they were much more expensive now fair enough you know i think that there should be a, you know, there, there should be more investigation into, well, what is your profit margin on this laptop? You know, how much money do your shareholders get for every laptop that I buy? And how much money did the worker that assembled it make? You know, I mean, you know, like they have to have ingredients lists on the back of it, on the back of everything that's food. There should be a where the money went on the, you know, on the back of a laptop. And that didn't necessarily mean a laptop now has to cost twice as much. But if you showed what the profit margin was that the, the shareholders were going to get, what the person that built it got paid, you know, then you can make a more informed choice. But that's how we're being divided economically as well. Yeah. Oh, you could be you living know, in that the... country, which is a developing nation, and they, they're having to do their industrial revolution now. And then they're having yeah. to try and encourage mass manufacture of goods that they can't afford to buy. It's yeah. like, you know, trainers. You know, people putting trainers together can't afford to buy a pair of those trainers. Yeah, which is just insane. You know, that's that's just a stupidity. And, and instead, you can go and buy a pair of, you know, you know, German boots made made by people in Germany who are, I can guarantee you living, you know, much nicer life yeah. that will last you, like, you know, 10 years like my last pair of German walking boots did, you know, and and you don't have to feel bad about it. And okay, you have to probably pay an extra, you know, fifty pound, a hundred dollars, whatever it is, to go and buy a pair of like good quality boots that are going to last you that long. But if they're going to last but, you ten years, and you're going to wear them, if they're going to last you ten years instead of instead of lasting you like you know maybe six months, if you buy a cheap pair of like you know, you know, insert brand name here, you know, shitty crap, you know, um, sneakers um, or trainers, then sure you just paid for that in and of itself you know you weren't supportive of the organization you weren't supportive of, of that model of business you know you were supportive of a positive model of business um and you got a benefit out of it you know you could you yourself can see the benefit yeah type thing you know. okay so we're getting up to 58 minutes we're just gone past 58 minutes and we're trying to keep this down to an time. hour so yeah obviously that's a topic that could be hours and hours of discussion and we'd love to hear your, Anyways. your thoughts on it contribute be part of it um, yes. I included a homework segment, which was a, like a, I, I want to include some kind of thought experiment. So you just, you know, if you've got five or 10 minutes just, and you've got nothing better to think about, here it is. So if aliens turned up, could you defend human bigotry in any meaningful way? Now, I'm not saying that you're bigoted or as, as a listener, I'm not saying that you necessarily know anybody bigoted, but bigotry exists. So if, if, if somebody turned up and said, you know, what's all this with you? picking arbitrary reasons to dislike each other could it be defended in any way um so that's us wrapping it up pretty much so um i just want to remind you of the church of server youtube channel which just push, put in church of server into you can even put it into google because it's it, that's what comes up comes up and the email address is church of server at gmail.com and yeah we want your contributions we want to hear from you and do stuff and we want more people on the show we want you know we can set that up so this has been Church of Server Podcast Zero. So I've been V. And I've been Harlequin. And we'd like to hear from you.
Good night. And have fun in time. Yeah. <laughs>